I'm going to dive into, well, murky waters today. There are several queries that are raised when you look at all the land parcels involved, who owns them, and the intended use of them. Now, I've shown this document before, and ultimately this one here is saying the current position this one here is advising the very near future intended position so what you then have are three distinct lots all of these ones that NCV Enterprises own and control then you have two lots that Kempcove and Peter Van Leishout control. Then you have one lot that Peter Van Leishout, Dolph Cook and Darva, Darko Kovac control. Well, plus these other two lots, I don't know how they're fitting them in. But the short and the sweet of it, let's just say that these joint owners represent one owner. So in that sense, we've got one lot that's attributed to joint owners, one or two lots that are attributed to Kempcove, and the rest are attributed to NCV Enterprises. So you essentially have three different owners for the proposed uh, development of Nightcap on Mingimble. Now, here is the problem I have. The number of investors that have actually bought in in, say, the last six to eight months cannot be confirmed. But any of those that have actually paid over any money, uh, well, in the DA that's just been submitted, DA 21-0010, all they still have is a draft shareholders agreement. Now anyone that's been involved and knows the history of this development and the people involved with it knows that a draft agreement is, well, that's a very big red flag and a warning signal because this is what happened to the previous investors. It wasn't a shareholders agreement, it was title deed agreement or some, some vessel that were Lumban Horizons, aka Adrian Brannock, cooked up in his head on how you could show people that they actually had some right and legal ownership. Now this shareholders agreement would be completely unnecessary if when somebody bought into Nightcap on Mingimble that NCV Enterprises actually redistributed the shares of the shareholders of the company that actually has legal title over the land. Because it's actually said that all investors, everybody has equal say, and you also have equal say in running the companies. So by that definition, if you are not listed on NCV Enterprises, as being a shareholder, you do not have any legal right over the land that they are proposing to develop. Now, imagine that these three, own, three separate owners do their RLSC lots, reduce it down into 10, and all these investors buy in. Where are all those investors actually going to share in joint ownership? Because there's nothing, nothing out of all the companies that are associated with them. And let me show you. So there's 44 company searches that have been done to look at who is legally responsible for all the companies and who all the shareholders are that are holding shares in company names. So we can identify clearly the people that are involved and also the company vehicles that they're using 
to hold the asset in. I mean, NCV Enterprises owns the land, is putting through, well, is paying Peter Van Leishout for 16 lots, these 16 lots here, that are currently in the name of Zimmerland, who is also Peter Van Leishout, sole director and shareholder. So they're going to buy all of those lots off them and they will then become the legal title holders. And when I say they, I say NCV Enterprises and its shareholders will become the legal landowners. Not anyone that's actually paid in as an investor under this draft shareholders agreement. And ultimately, to actually be put on a company as a shareholder is a matter of ATSIC paperwork. It doesn't even require any of this crap. Now, this stuff over here, this draft neighbourhood management statement where you become a draft shareholders agreement is a way of making a separate vehicle for all investors to have some control over the land that is held under legal title by these other companies. There is nothing to indicate that NCV Enterprises or Kemp Cove or Peter Van Leishout, Dolph Cook and Darko Kovac are actually going to give up legal title to those lands once it's developed. Under what name, what company name, do they propose that investors become shareholders in? Because none of the company vehicles that exist around any of the members are go have had any shareholders put in. So when you look at NCV Enterprises, well, let's do that again, shall we? All right, I'm going to throw in a little bit extra at this stage by putting in Mount Burrell Commercial as well. Because anyone that knows the history of what's been going on, they know that there were two distinct parts that were set up at Bulla Bulla. One was the residential area that held the land, and that was Wollumbin Horizons, and the other part was Mount Burrell Commercial. Now, there were members of Bulla Bulla that could not buy into Wollumbin Horizons because it was not a commercial vehicle. They wanted to put superannuation into it and they couldn't do that in Wollumbin Horizons. So it had to go in to Mount Burrell Commercial. Now some of the investors that are in Mount Burrell Commercial have been there since the days of Bulla Bulla when they first bought it. So Wollumbin Horizons and Adrian Brannock lost control of 3222 and it went into liquidation. Then it was bought back by NCV Enterprises, which is also a member company. Now the fact that it is a phoenix manoeuvre, what they have done, is illegal and will be a matter of investigation in the future but there are other things to deal with in the current development application that these things can wait. Now I mentioned Mount Burrell Commercial and I'm going to get sidetracked on that because it is an asset that the members have controlled for some years now. As you can see it was set up in November 2015 when they purchased the residential lot of 3222 and Mount Burrell Commercial. It was the same set of investors in Bulla Bulla that paid for the land and for this business. But because the business was kept separate and not attached to the land, anyone that was had their money invested in Mount Burrell Commercial had no entitlement through the sale of the land. And because of their draft deed, they could not prove legal ownership and that how it was meant to tie back to ownership in that land, so their share is completely ignored. Rhyme Earth Healer paid his money into, well, they paid his money into Mount Burrell Commercial 
but he was actually a member of the Bulla Bulla community. And when that was sold, he didn't have any entitlement because they had put his money into Mount Burrell Commercial and not into Wollumbin Horizons. So this is where, when you sign any agreement, you need to be very clear on what your legal rights are. Because your legal rights are your only recall if you have any problems. So Mount Burrell has actually been run by the developers of Nightcap on Minjimble for quite a few years now. And many of the majority shareholders in here are rigged with member companies. Rainmaker Group Holdings is the majority shareholding. And that actually, well, I'll show you. So Rainmaker Group Holdings is the major shareholder in Mount Burrow Commercial. And the directors are Mark Darwin and Philip Dixon. See, this is where I've said that Mark Darwin might be not the front man promoting it, but he is still heavily involved. And not only is he heavily involved by still being a director, but Love One's Tribe is what he put. He had the shares, a lot of shares, in his own name. When his partner, Caroline Coleman, then cha he changed those shares out of his name into Caroline Coleman's company name, Love One's Tribe. So as Adrian Brannock gets his shares and benefits through Nyepi and his wife, Mark Darwin gets his shares and benefits through his partner in Loved One's Tribe. And Dixon Rainmaker is 100% Philip Dixon. So the majority shareholders in Rainmaker in Mount Burrell Commercial is jointly Adrian Brannock, Mark Darwin and Philip Dixon. So they have the majority say out of all the other shareholders. Now if you go through here, you look at Katz Corporation. Well, let's bring up NCV again. Because Katz Corporation is Cherie Stokes. Now Cherie Stokes has actually appeared in many of the member companies. She starts them off on a dollar share. And the next thing you know that they've bumped it up to 3.7 million and 5,600 shares. So Cherie Stokes is the company starter and also recently she was reappointed as a director in Mount Burrow Commercial just in November last year. And maybe that's due to the fact that the Sphinx Rock Cafe is closed. They have pretty much driven out all paying leaseholders. They've got nobody paying any lease, any monthly income coming in from leaseholders at all. You have got the Sphinx Rock Cafe that is closed. You have got the caravan park that had all the cabins removed. Then when all the people show up, they illegally camp all over the place because the caravan park is closed. Then you've got the fruit and veggie shop that had lace curtains stuck up in it like someone had just moved in there too. The only business that's actually open is run by a member's relative who would they, they would either be paying wages to or make some agreement, well, you work for us and we'll let you live here rent free or do this, whatever. Many of the brand fridges have been removed because they have not been keeping up the sales to require keeping those fridges there. The general store shelves are half stocked. People can't even get cigarettes there. So ultimately they've taken a thriving business area and when you look at the Sphinx Rock Cafe and what it offered more than just a cafe, it was a meeting point. There were so many events that went on there. I mean, they even had um, mobile daycare come in or playgroup. I mean, there was so much that was provided 
to the the general community that has now just been shut down and nothing's replaced it except well the ill will and nastiness of people that like to hoon up and down roads been less than charming yes you know i'm talking about you mark mcmurtry don't you 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 little rev head going around sticking your finger up at people you know and you know what restrain children in your car you might think it's okay to drive around on public roads without a driver's license or in an unregistered vehicle but you should never ever be so irresponsible as to do that with a child in your car and to not have that child restrained by a seat belt you ought to shape up boy sorry i get a little bit um annoyed with adults that haven't got the brains to look after children properly you know they can take risks with their own life but you never endanger children's lives with your own stupidity and your warped mentality and delusions so philip dixon and sheree stokes were also involved with the bulla bulla days their investment in bulla bulla has just carried on over through the mount burrell commercial and thereby given them right of entitlement to into the nightcap on Minjimbal development as well because this is still a nightcap on Minjimbal member company it was never seized when Wollumbin Horizons went into liquidation but the way that this has been it has been run into the ground you had a thriving business area uh, all but one shop was open and they've shut all the shops pretty much driven out all the leaseholders any profit coming in through leaseholders and they've driven away the local community you know the local community has been against this for so long and because these people own the shop Philip Dixon here has really gone over and beyond what an employer should even say to an employee in circumstances the threats and intimidations of actually making some oh you're going to lose your job if you don't do what i tell you because the development i'm involved with i don't want posters upside outside this shop up for it's ridiculous this man walks around like a little hitler and says oh well you know I own this you don't know who you're talking to I'm talking to another human being I don't care what you own on paper you know what your shit stinks like everybody else's sorry to be so crude but uh, yes there are some less than <laughs> delightful situations that so many people have been put in because of Philip Dixon because of Mark McMurtry because of Adrian Brennock and because of Billy Fitzgerald's um, nice threatening letters you know shut up or we'll sue you which is an interesting thing about the threats that were made to me to say but I won't get on to that here anyway let's continue to find out who's involved with Nightcap on Minjimbal because Cherie Stokes is Katz Corporation. Michaela Lowe is also a, another member of Nightcap on Minjimbal. Emon Lowe, her husband, has been one that's also been leaving lovely comments on my videos and making threats to me as well about, you know, I'm going to get a beat down, you know. Now, Mark Bloomer, superannuation. Oh, Emon Lowe was actually in the headlines too not so long ago for um cryptocurrency frauds and things like that and it's a part of an ongoing investigation and the police actually called or the investigators called for any other victims of his to come forward so Imon Lowe just on that alone and there's a lot of goss I can't really share because <laughs> it is goss <laughs> now Mark Bloomer super is also Mark Bloomer he was also part of Bulla Bulla. Now, A.B. Williams is a very interesting one because, um, one moment. 
So Mecca Super Investments is Mark and Rebecca Fagan. They are actually also past investors of Bulla Bulla that the bulk of the money that they put in was invested in Mount Burrow Commercial. So again, when they wanted to get money back from the sale of the land that they bought into, they could not actually legally be entitled to it. So they still have their super tied up through Mecca Super Investments. Now, A.B. Williams, one moment. So A.B. Williams is Adam Brett Williams. His name has never come up before. I have no idea of his involvement in it whatsoever. But it was also their intent to actually have casual investors that were not actually part of the community, but the bulk of the community would hold the say in the shares so that they would always control Mount Burrow Commercial. That's why I've also not included Petra Sorbello, George Klaus and Stephanie Froberg because I believe that they are likewise just casual investors and not actually members of Bulla Bulla or any other part. That, uh, as I said, that it was their intention that they do offer shares to people outside of the community or membership so that other people, they could get their money and spend it, but they would still be able to control everything that happened with it. So, in other words, to find some suckers that would put their money in so that they could play around with it. And the people that buy these shares, 200 shares is with 5,600 shares. But let's get on to getting through the other companies that also have shares. Mode Investments. So Mode Investments is Richard Mote and Tatum Catherine McGeary, who are directors, and Richard Mote is sole shareholder. So now Dixon Rainmaker is 100% director and shareholder Philip Dixon. Now let's have a look at Foundation Enterprises. So Foundation Enterprises is Brent and Rachel Delaney. Now to understand how this person is involved, we need to look at High Fusion Finance, which is just the next one, and Matthew Perryman. Now if you actually look at past shareholders in the Bulla Bulla community through, uh, one second. All right, so the details for Mount Burrell Commercial, I've had to put over two page images here. This is the second page, which tells us the previous details and position of Mount Burrell Commercial. Now, Matthew Perryman was actually a shareholder and he was also a director. So at some stage, Matthew Perryman was involved with Mount Burrow Commercial and got out. Then he bought back in. And when he bought back in, he bought in Brett Delaney. Now, you can see here, now I'll just go back here and show you further down. Because the shareholder companies of High Fusion Finance and High Fusion Proprietary Limited are all around Matthew Perryman and in this one he is joint uh, owner and director or shareholder and director with Brent, Brent Delaney and Rachel. So in that sense these shares of Foundation Enterprises, High Fusion Finance and High Fusion Proprietary Limited are all around Matthew Perryman bringing in Brent and Rachel Delaney to reinvest, well he reinvested in Mount Burrow Commercial and they invested for the first time. So now these Kalmalea, Carmel Schumann and Kahn, let's have a look at those. So here we have Matthew Perryman in Kalmalea again buying more shares in Mount Burrow Commercial. And in Calmed Proprietary Limited, 
we have Edward Sherman and Carmel Sherman. So they've doubled up on their shares too. So Carm and Carmel Sherman, the Shermans, have got 400 shares. And these, well, Matthew Perryman has probably got the best part of, what, 600 shares? So he's getting up and having a fair say. He's actually getting on equal footing with Philip Dixon and his 600 shares. Because 600 shares, Philip Dixon's got 600 shares in his name, 200 shares in Dixon Rainmaking, and he's also got one third control in Rainmaker Group Holdings. So essentially, Philip Dixon has got, out of any of the shareholders in Mount Burrell Commercial, he has got the most say with the most shares. So I hope I've explained how the investors from Bulla Bulla are, are, some of them are still sitting in Mount Burrell Commercial. And also these last lot of investors down here have actually, that involve Edward and Carmel Schumann and Brent and Rachel Delaney and Matthew Perryman have bought in within the last year. Now, as I said, Matthew Perryman had got out and then he came back in. So if 200 shares is worth 200,000, well, I don't know exactly how much they are worth, but Mount Burrell Commercial is actually supposed to have shares that are worth $3.7 million. In its current condition, you would be lucky to sell it for $300,000. It is not None of the businesses are existing and thriving. You couldn't even send in an investor to take over and buy the company because they'd have to rebuild the broken businesses. And looking at what they've done at Mount Burrell Commercial and how they've handled shareholders' monies, I would think twice about how they're going to actually handle the greater nightcap on Minjimbal development. So now I've sidetracked with Mount Burrell Commercial to try and give some idea of the history of the shareholders that are still sitting in Mount Burrell Commercial that could find no joy when the land was sold and that their shares are actually valueless. Roy Murth here can't get his money back. They promised to buy his shares off him but always come up with excuses on why they couldn't and even when they had all these hundreds and hundreds of thousands coming in with Matthew Perryman and Brent and Rachel Delaney and the Schumans, still couldn't give back Rhyme Earth Healer his 200000 Because for some reason, well, they come up with excuses. Derek Zillman is the one that comes up with all the excuses for Mount Burrell Commercial and for NCV Enterprises. Now, Adrian Brennock and Mark McMurtry are more out in front, but Derek Zillman is also a very important player. And, well, there's a lot that we could say about him, but we won't at the, this stage. Yudaki Capital is, well, I'll show you that one. All right, so Yudaki Capital is Mark McMurtry and Derek Zillman, directors, and shareholders are Zillman nominees, Nyepi and First in Time. Now Zillman nominees is Michelle and Derek Zillman, or it could just be Derek on his own, but it's still Derek Zillman. Nyepi Proprietary Limited is Adrian Brennock, and I will always refer to Nyepi Proprietary Limited as Adrian Brennock because he moved his shares out of that company name when he went bankrupt and he didn't want all the controlling shares that Nyepi have in all these companies to be seized in his bankruptcy. So he moved Nyepi into his wife's name and just never said anything about it. And still maintains control over the development through Nyepi Proprietary Limited and gets the money back through that as well. Not doing too badly for a bankrupt, is he? 
and first in time is Mark McMurtry. So the people that have the major shares in Yadaki Capital are Derek Zillman, Adrian Brennock and Mark McMurtry. And then you've got these other piddly little shares that are held. We'll get into those in a moment because I've already just said that Nyepi and Derek Zillman also hold extra shares here. But uh, Jesk Holdings and Winner Super are the same people as well. But before I show you that, I should also point out here that their distribution of shares is actually not a valid distribution of shares. There is 1,091 that you have registered with ATSIC and yet you represent 1,093. That's actually an error in the distribution of the shares, something that you should actually tend to because it is not clearly defining. You're saying that there's 1,091 and yet all the shares add up to 1,093. So you need to get on and fix that up, Cherie Stokes. You're the one that they always go running to. I've had some nice little voxes with you in it. And I must say that, you know, when you say to them that you can't make these things up, what, you expect that you give it back to them so they make stuff up and put it in there? You know damn well they're making up stuff to give to you. And yet, you don't care. You'll just take what they give you as long as you didn't actually make that stuff up. So here is the questionable share just distribution that happened when Jesk Holdings and Winner Super came on board. And after doing searches on those, the results are the same people. Craig Oldroyd and Juliet, Juliet Oldroyd. I'll just show you the other. So as you can see, Craig and Juliet, Oldroyd. Uh, now, the interesting thing about Craig Oldroyd is that he seems to be a very strong supporter of David Cole and Robbie Mills and the OSTF. So this contribution from outside of, uh, in, well, what would seem community members has actually come via OSTF influencers and Mark McMurtry. So one would wonder, but uh, Craig Oldroyd is the only one that's actually bought in, as is Matthew Perryman, in the last year in any member associated companies that is actually a legal shareholder. If you've paid monies to Nightcap on Mingenball, and if you are not in NCV Enterprises or Mount Burrell Commercial, you have no legal say. And even if your money is put into Mount Burrell Commercial, you don't have a legal say over the land that you would want to be living on, only Mount Burrell Commercial. So if I haven't confused you, <laughs> it is very in-depth and it has taken a long time to actually understand all the complexities of it. So if, it's, if some of this is going over your head because you have never heard any of this before, look, everyone feels exactly the same way because they have twisted and contorted so many things in their endeavour to, well, to create a tax haven to get people to invest in their rainmaker scheme where they even get people that are already invested to invest more. And this is the thing that the whole Nightcap on Minjimbal development is not about creating a rural land share community that is based on like values. It's about creating something that is profitable for the people of NCV Enterprises and for Peter Van Leishout and Dolph Cook. I'm not going to say anything about Darko Kovac because I actually believe this man has very little say over, he's only got one one quarter share and I think these two fighting together <laughs> is more than he can bear. 
And for what I know, he doesn't live there. He doesn't have anything to do with them. He's just a, a name on a title. And perhaps maybe a mistake he wished he'd never made too. But anyway, that's, that's not something for here. So with all the confusion going on over within the internal structures of companies and everything, you've then got these companies that now own assets. NCV spent $2 million to buy 322. Now, these 16 lots of Peter Van Leishouts, it's said that, and I can't confirm this, this is only an estimation that something like 14 million was the asking price for those 16 lots. So NCV Enterprises have now got to come up with $14 million to buy all those lots, then come up with the money to subdivide the land and create 10 rural land sharing communities out of it. And the thing being that they are 10 rural land sharing communities, being land sharing, you're supposed to actually share in the land. At what stage in through this whole in, entire development I would have to say that people have already bought in. In the last year, people would have bought in, other than the Craig Oldroyd and these other ones. Your other investors that came as part of the promotion after they sold it, or NCV bought it, and it all started ramping up with come and buy in we can accommodate, you know, we're flexible. If you want to bring in a down payment and, you know, there's vendor financing, there's all these different options available. So let's assume that they've got even one person that's actually bought in since then. They would have to be listed on NCV Enterprises as a shareholder and for it to be living up to what they say is that anyone buying in has equal say and equal share, well then any time anyone buys in to NCV, they'd have to redistribute all the shares so that all members have the same and equal number of shares and no one has any more say than the other. But none of the people, not even one, that you could expect may have actually bought in. Well, there are people that have actually showed up at Mount Burrell Commercial waiting, what for? To get onto the land at Nightcap on Minjimble. And these represent people that would have given over money to do that. And this is more than one person. There was a caravan, three cars, a van, a bus, a four-wheel drive. And most of them arrived separately and not together, so they are separate people that have invested in Nightcap on Minjimble, arrived on the doorstep, but there's nothing to give them. So they go into the Mount Burrell commercial, but they can't go into the caravan park because they've shut that down. And it's also summer, there's no shelter in so many caravan parks. It's unbelievable, but it's also not because if there was shelter, that might actually mean that you could get up one day or the park own, owner could get up one day and your guests are squashed in a caravan because a limb fell out of a tree. I mean, I went round to my daughter's yesterday and there was a huge limb that had fallen out in the wind. And this was just in someone's driveway. So... I can understand why they keep them clear of trees, but it's also not very nice in the middle of summer to sit in a sweat box. Even if you've got air conditioning on, you find a shady spot. So they all set up around uh, the old um, Sphinx Rock Cafe and up the back towards the river under the trees. So all these people that you could expect have actually paid over money should have actually received a shareholders agreement and not a draft. But they, if this is a draft that's been presented in January 2021, well then what could any investors have signed anything other than a draft? 
because well or didn't they present the actual document to the council with the development application did they just say well you can have the draft we don't need to tell you the final that investors actually signed will do that at a later date which is highly possible that they have not actually presented what those that have actually bought in have actually signed and to actually look at what legal rights you have now that you've signed that piece of paper because it doesn't matter whether you think it's legal it matters whether the court thinks it's legal and I can tell you that most of the documents that Adrian Brannock Mark Darwin, Mark McMurtry, Philip Dixon, Cherie Stokes have been involved with, you cannot rely on the documentation. It's just as simple as that. They have got a record of bad record keeping. It's an excuse they use. Oh, I keep bad records. It's actually illegal. But they use it as an excuse to actually, well, not fulfill so many requirements that they are within a company. So now I've bored you senseless with a lot of talk about the companies and who's in them. Back to the patchwork that makes up the land titles. Now, as I've said, that once they finish doing this, there will be this lot here that will remain the property of Kemp Cove and Peter Van Leinschelt. This lot here will remain the property of Peter Van Leishout, Dolph Cook and Darko Kovac. However, they have signed consent for that land to be included as part of the development and houses will go on there. So I just stuck the houses and the roads on. So as you can see, they propose to put housing all through the two areas that will not be under the control of NCV Enterprises. So my ultimate um, problem with this is that all the land is not going to be owned by one that everybody can invest in and share equally in. How do they invest in something uh, that takes away from the legal right and ownership of these people. At what stage does Peter Van Leishout, um, you know, say, well, Kemp Cove doesn't own this land anymore because it's contracted to use, um, you know, for how many years, I don't know, to NICAP or Minjimbo or NCV Enterprises, and he can't use that land. I mean, how is he supposed to... He's not intending to give up the control over the land, yet all of these people that would come onto the development are told that all of this is common property except for the exclusive use areas. But that's not actually going to be the case because this will not be... Um, I'm sure Dolph is not going to like people just wandering onto his property that he owns and this is going to be the issue, that there are too many owners of the land to begin with, that you've then got to say, well, the ownership is already distributed and now you want to say that all these investors buying in are going to share equally, have a say equally. How? How is that actually going to happen? How are the people that have already paid over money to invest? Where did that go? They have not been listed as shareholders in NCV Enterprises. And they would have to be either listed as a shareholder in NCV Enterprises or as a shareholder in a company that holds shares in NCV Enterprises. And as I've shown you that there's been no new additions to the top echelon of the, um, you know, Mark McMurtry, Adrian Brennock, Philip Dixon, Derek Zillman, Cherie Stokes, Richard Moat. Richard Moat's another one that has been involved for a long time and I haven't mentioned anywhere near enough about him. 
because he's your typical salesman. He'll stand up there and just feed you a whole heap of guff just to sell you something. And it, it doesn't matter how true or false it is as long as it sells you on the idea. You know, and, uh, well, he actually has accommodation on Nightcap on Minjimbal Properties. Well, whose property is it at the moment? At the moment, he's living on Peter Van Leishout's land. That will be Nightcap on Minjimbal's land. If they come up with the said, well, 14 million to purchase that contract out. But that won't be for these two lots. And it still will not explain how they intend to give all investors equal ownership and equal share and equal say in all of these lands. Because all NCV can offer is that they can have equal share in this land. And to get all that land, they're going to have to take out a mortgage. And it's only going to take one mispayment and all of anyone that's ever been moved on there, if you'd even had consent, tough. You know, if they can't keep up the payments on the land, it's going to um, mean foreclosure. That's if it ever got to that stage. Now, the thing I would say, though, if you are an investor in NCV or Nightcap on Minjimbal and you are not listed as a shareholder and you go through the gruelling process of what the past investors did, when NCV Enterprises goes into liquidation, you can actually, they'll have well, a lot of land assets that you can actually try and get your money back out of then. But not if the money that's owed over securing that big whopping loan of, say, $14 million, well, with interest in that back, it was going to cost a bit more to pay it all outright. And so thereby the $2 million that 3222 is worth that they paid for it, well... That got chewed up too by paying back what was secured to get the loan. Now there's one thing I'm actually, last thing I'm going to mention before I finish up here because I yeah, I think I've mentioned enough for today is that I actually tested the theory about, like they stated, one moment. Uh, so in the statement of environmental effects submitted by NCV Enterprises, they said that the land total was 1,584.934 hectares and then in brackets, well, and then it said plus 29.6 hectares. And after the 1,584, it actually had in brackets exclusive of Crown lands. So when you see something that says exclusive of, and they're telling you, right, well, there's 29.6 hectares of Crown lands, you would then think, well, it's exclusive of, so now that they've purchased them, it needs to be included. I mean, that's what it means, doesn't it? It, it said 1,584 excluding 29.6 hectares. So when they purchased it, now, to include it, you add 29.6. Now, wouldn't you take that as the interpretation to end up with the total development of 1,613.94 1, hectares? Well, it doesn't work out that way. So, when they said 1,584.34 hectares, I do believe instead of saying exclusive, they should have actually said inclusive and I'll show you why. So I went round and I did a polygon of the whole area and I kept it as in line as possible and when I was finished I wound up with a shortfall 1,554 hectares. So there's at least 30 hectares missing. Now as you go around and you move these things out, you might be able to make up your 30 hectares. I've tried to. 
But the thing being that if I could try and make up those 30 hectares, I can certainly not make up the extra 29.6 hectares. So even though the, the planet document, the statement of environmental effects says it's 1,584 and that's exclusive of 29.6 hectares of crown lands. That is actually what I believe to be an error and it is actually inclusive of crown lands. I do, yeah, I just, these are like the margin of error on these things is within you know one or two either way and I'm willing to accept that over a large area that you know it only takes to move these things a little bit that I could actually push it out to make 1584 hectares not on the diagrams that they've given but I could push it way over the lines and make sure they're all on the outside and probably make up that but I would, I would not be able to make up the Crown Roads. I tried to do this. So I just left it as I measured it and thought, well, to me, I'm not a surveyor. I'm not using this for anything. It is just a rough estimate. What is the total land size? So if I take where they've shown all the land titles and everything, it calculates to 1,553. I might actually do a zoomed in version where you go right in and make sure that you're really following the contours because even little things like this, you know, where you cut off a corner, that can block off meters and that can affect the overall calculation. So that's why I've tried to keep everything so online with what they're representing. So yes, I will finish it up now just by summarizing that I don't see anywhere how they've explained how they will take the current owners of all this land and how they will start sharing it with all those investors that come in. The draft shareholders agreement is not good enough not when you are bringing in investors now. That should not be a draft. That should be something that is set in concrete and unbreakable. And your shares should be represented in the company that owns the land so that you do have an equal say and share in it. But none of that is happening. And it's like deja vu. If you go back a few years to what Adrian Brennock and Mark Darwin and Mark McMurtry and Richard Mode and Derek Zillman and all of them were doing with Bulla Bulla. You know, they've just changed the names and made it such a bigger abomination. But the greed has just fueled the size of it. And also Peter Van Leishout's greed in wanting to give this land over to this development. I mean, seriously, Peter, what the hell are you doing? You could have turned that into a wildlife reserve. You could have stuck your name up on a plaque and had it there for generations to come. You could actually be someone that is beloved instead of being one of the most not liked people because you're working with the enemy. You actually jumped in bed with them. You knew the whole community was against it. You knew what they had done to past investors and still here you are today, doing business with them. Well, you're judged not only by the friends you keep, but the people you do business with as well. And I'm afraid you need to lift your game a bit if you don't want to be judged by the same brush they are. This is a reminder to people of the public meeting at the Ukai Hall on the 14th of March. Do drop in between at noon and three if you need any help, any ideas on how to fill out your submissions against this development application, please drop on in. There will be a lot of people in attendance there to help you with any queries where they can. And if we haven't found something out, well, <laughs> we just ask more questions. 
and that's what the council is for too in taking the submissions because a lot of the questions that people do have still can't be answered and maybe the regional panel will have to answer those questions anyway so do drop in to the Ukai Hall next Sunday and uh, talk to your fellow community members and if you haven't already put in a submission uh, and you need some advice on how to structure it as I said there is a lot of helpful advice you can make it as detailed as simple as you want but I think the important thing is that you have your say because you know if you keep quiet well you might get the monsters that come in the dark I like this image <laughs> kind of reminds me of one of Max Egan's thumbnails but you know this one's actually appropriate and this one's not used as a constant fear-based creation it is kind of yeah appropriate looking for uh, truth in the fog <laughs> all right get on down to Yukai Hall plan to be there next Sunday and even if you've already put in a submission drop on down and show your support anyway. Anyway, talk to you next time. Bye.